All right. So, uh, hello and wel welcome everyone to the second week of interactive live sessions for the course on computational fluid dynamics for incompressible flows. This is being offered by NPTEL, being instructed by Professor Amarish Dalal from the Department of Mechanical Engineering at IIT Guwahati. Uh, my name is Devjit. I am a PhD scholar at IIT Madras and I'll be the TA for this course uh, like every week. So we will be solving some sample problems together. We shall be discussing uh, any doubts that you may have and overall having a discussion about the lectures of that week. So without any further ado, let's get started. So this is the Sorry, my screen froze. Give me a moment. Yeah. I'll reshare my screen. Yeah, so sorry for that. So we will now get started and move on to question number two, question number one of today's session. Uh, so the entire discussion of this week was based on how to classify different partial differential equations. So why is that important? Because in CFD, we basically solve uh, some partial differential equations which govern the fluid flow. And in order to get into that, First of all, we need to know about what are the different types of PDs and what are the uh, different characteristics which they possess. So, uh, continuing with that theme, uh, this question is asking us that which of these is not a type of partial differential equation or PDE. So, by PDE, I mean a partial differential equation based on their mathematical classification. So read the question carefully, look at the options, and then when you have figured out the correct solution to it, type it in the chat box, or you can unmute and answer as well. If you have any doubts related to the question, please feel free to ask, do not hesitate. So yeah, so this is today's question number one, which of these is not a type of PD based on their mathematical classification? Is it option A, circular, option B, elliptic, Option C, parabolic, or option D, hyperbolic. Okay, so I can see some quick responses in the chat box in favor of option A. Let's see what everyone else has to say. So mathematical classification, basically classification can be of two types. One is the physical classification. And the other one is mathematical classification. Okay, so still three responses. I'm expecting a few more. So if I'll request everyone to participate in this and keep on solving as we go along. Okay. So once you have figured out the correct solution, you can type it in the chat box. Okay, so basically physical classification is of two types. They are either equilibrium problems or time marching problems or marching problems. Not this time. 
marching problem. And mathematical classification is of three types. It can be either elliptic or hyperbolic or parabolic. Now these three are here, elliptic, parabolic, hyperbolic. Circular is not there. So option A should be the correct one. So yeah. So if we look at the solution, circular is the is not a type of PD based on their mathematical classification. So it was a simple one. Uh, I hope things are very clear. Any doubts regarding this one? I hope not. So we will move along. We'll move on to question number two now. Now in order to solve time marching problems, we require which of the following? Is it option A, boundary conditions? Is it option B, initial conditions? Is it option C, all of the above? Or is it option D, none of the above? So option C being all of the above basically means A and B. And none of the above means none of them, right? Neither A nor B nor C. Okay, so once again, we have a few quick responses, one in favor of option B and a few in favor of option C. So a little bit of a split. Okay, so another one in favor of option B. So to solve any kind of problem, be it equilibrium or time marching, we need some information. So, <clears throat> which of these informations are required? Is it option A, boundary conditions? Option B, initial conditions? Option C, all of the above? Or option D, none of the above? Okay, so let's have a look at the solution now. The solution is actually option C, all of the above. So both A and B are required. That's why option C would be the correct option. So let's uh, recap for a little. So for time marching problems, basically uh, you need to first of all specify the initial condition. So if, if let's say uh, one time marching problem could be the heating of a long slender rod with a candle. So this kind of a problem. So here what we need to solve is the uh, unsteady heat conduction equation which is given by something like this. And this happens to be a time marching problem. And so for this the initial condition is required. So initial condition meaning so I'll try to draw this in three axes like this. So this would be our temperature axis, this would be our time axis, and this would be the space or the x axis. So initial condition meaning at t equal to zero, you have to give the data whatever the temperature profile is. And boundary condition meaning, so at all time, so at some location, so let's say at x equal to zero, you have to uh, fix some value or you know give some gradient so that also we will require there are different types of boundary conditions so let's say in this case we fix the temperature value at some t so this value at all time for x equal to zero will be fixed that is known as a boundary condition and this temperature profile would you know develop over time into something like this so this is again x and the this was let's say at time t equal to zero and this was at some time t equal to tau and this keeps evolving with time. So both initial and boundary conditions are required and in this case since it's a second order derivative there are two boundary conditions required not only at x equal to zero at x equal to l also some another boundary condition might be required. Okay.
I hope things are clear. Any questions on this? Okay, so just to recap, we learned different types of boundary conditions. Can you name a few of them? You can unmute and answer or you can type in the chat box as well if you feel uncomfortable unmuting. Just to recap, we learned this in the first week that there are different types of boundary conditions. Try to name a few of them. So I'll get started. So one type is a Dirichlet type boundary condition. Yeah, so someone in the chat box has written it's a Neumann type boundary condition. Good. Yeah, Robin type, that's another one. So, and then apart from that, it can be a Cauchy type and or, you know, combinations of uh, each of them. So, these are the different types of boundary conditions. Good. Okay. So, we will move along. We will move on to question number three now, which is asking us that in order to mathematically classify PDEs, coefficients of which terms of the equation should be considered. So, in given a PDE, which terms of that PD should you focus on while you are trying to classify them mathematically? Are they terms of the highest degree, the terms of the lowest degree, the terms of the highest order or the terms of the lowest order? Read this question very carefully and once you have figured out the correct solution, you can Type it in the chat box or unmute and say as well. So I'll write down the generic uh, PD for example here. So it can be dou phi dou x square plus b dou 2 t dou x dou y plus c dou 2 t dou y square plus d dou phi dou x plus e dou phi dou y with e f equal to 0. So this is a generic uh, partial differential equation. Now coefficients of which terms these a, b, c, d, e, a to e these are the coefficients. Which of these should you be looking at? Should you be looking at the terms of the highest degree, the lowest degree, the highest order, or the lowest order? Options A, B, C, and D. Okay, so we have a couple of responses in favor of option C. Let's see what others have to say. So in this equation, which coefficients matter while determining the mathematical classification? We have got a few responses, but I would urge everyone to participate in this and send in your response. Option C again. Let's see. There's no hurry. Take your time, but figure this out correctly. Okay, so everyone is, everyone seems to be convinced that it should be option C, the terms of the highest order. Let's have a look at the solution. It is indeed the terms of the highest order. So if we go back and take a look at this. So we need to look at whether b square minus 4ac is greater than, lesser than, or you know, or equal to 0 or not. That determines the mathematical classification, right? So in this case, uh, a, b, c are the 
coefficients of the second order terms of this equation and this is a second order equation so the orders of these are two and these two are one and we are looking at the terms of the highest order so in case it was something like this so in case it was uh, let me think of something yeah so let's say it was do 3p do t3 equal to let's say do 2p do x square to the power 4 now this is a third order but fourth degree pd in this case we uh, and the coefficients are let's say a and b so in this case we need to look at the coefficient of the term with the highest order not the one with the highest degree right so this was a bit of a lame e example because there are no other terms but you get the point right you have to look at terms of the highest order and not the highest degree I hope things are clear. Any questions, anyone? Right. So that's why option C should be the correct one. Okay. So if there are no questions, we will move along. We'll move on to question four now. Now this is a match the following type of question. We have two columns, one on the left hand side and the one on the right hand side. Uh, the column on the left hand side has different uh, physical problems which have uh, certain equations governing them. And the column on the right hand side are uh, the three different mathematical classifications of equations. So each of them correspond to uh the at least one term on the other and you have to figure out the correct combination and then there are four combinations given below in the four options so option a is a1 b2 c3 option b is a3 b2 c1 option c is a1 b3 c2 or option d is a2 b1 c3 you have to find out the correct combination here so there's no hurry take your time uh, do this correctly and once you have figured out the uh, correct solution uh, type it in the chat box Okay, so we have a few responses here and three of them in favor of option D. Let's see what others have to say. Let's try to uh, simplify this problem a bit. So I'll write down the different governing equations now. So let's say for option A, the 2D steady state heat conduction equation. The mathematical form of that is something like this. So it's steady state, so no time derivatives there. It's only a Laplacian in temperature. Then option B is 1D unsteady heat conduction equation. This is something that I wrote in one of the previous slides. So this looks something like this. And 
option C, we have second order wave equation. In the lectures, it was touched upon quite a bit. So that looks like something like this. We have to figure out now which one is which. So let's start with the first one, option A. So here, if I put A, B, and C, so, uh, and we will compare this with the generic uh, 2D PD, which is something like this. I am omitting some of the other terms which are you know first order and so on so because these three are the ones which are important so anyway so for option a b is equal to 0 a and c are each equal to 1 so if i try to compute b square minus 4 ac this becomes 0 minus 4 into 1 into 1 this is minus 4 less than 0 so this should be what should this be Anyone? Elliptic, correct. So this should be elliptic. And elliptic is option 2. So A should correspond to 2. Similarly, now we'll try to figure out option B. So here, the we have to focus on terms of the highest order. This one is the term of the highest order. And we have alpha. So A equal to alpha and b and c are both 0. So b square minus 4ac becomes 0 minus 4 into alpha into 0. So this becomes 0, which is equal to 0. And if b square minus 4ac is equal to 0, what should this be? Parabolic, perfect. So option b should correspond to option 1. And we are left with C being equal to hyperbolic, but let's go through the exercise. So here I have A equal to 1 and C equal to C square and B equal to 0. So once again, if I try to compute this, B square is 0. Now I have 4 into 1 into minus C square. So this becomes 4 C square. And C is basically wave speed and anyway, the square of any number would definitely be positive. So 4C square has to be 0 and hence uh, this has to be greater than 0. Hence it should be hyperbolic. That is option 3. Which is option 3. So it should be A2, B1, C3 which is option D and indeed the correct answer. So all of you who did this correctly, well done. Uh, okay. So any questions? On this one? Okay. We have a question in the chat box, which is asking us what will be the nature of the PDE if we have 2D case, for example, B. Okay. So I, if I can understand your question correctly, I think you mean if it's a 2D unsteady heat conduction problem, right? So, do you mean something like this? So, in this case also, I have uh, b equal to 0, uh, a equal to alpha, and c equal to alpha as well. So here I have to look at these two terms now. And b square minus 4ac now becomes 0 square minus 4 into alpha square. Okay. So this becomes minus 4 alpha square, which is again less than 0 because alpha is a positive number. This is the uh, thermal diffusivity.
this is always a positive number. So this is less than 0 and hence it should be elliptic. Sir, but it's a time marching problem. Yeah. So apart from yeah, so marching problems are like uh, marching problems hyperbolic or correct, correct. It should be either hyperbolic or elliptic, uh, hyperbolic or parabolic. Mm -hmm. But in this case, so a is zero, a is alpha, c is also alpha, c is zero, b squared, zero minus four alpha squared. Hmm. No, this will uh, actually still be elliptic because if you think of it this way, so I have a domain like this. In this, the alpha into uh, the grad square of t is equal to instead of being zero, so the uh, time derivative itself is that so uh, in CFD what we do is we you know in this in these kind of situations we march the problem so basically t at uh, let's say t plus 1 minus t at t divided by some delta t which in this case is 1 anyway so and this would be equal to this gradient whatever the value of this and this would depend only on the boundary conditions and that is a feature of elliptic problems. Does that make sense? It would definitely march in time, but at a certain instant, the rate of uh, change of temperature is basically dependent only on the boundary conditions. Does that make sense? And in any case, so uh, maybe we start with some situation here, but eventually this unsteady problem would approach a steady state and it would become steady. Does that make sense what I just said? Mathematically, it's elliptic. Sir, we, yeah. Yeah. Uh, will the presence of any time term overwrite the nature uh, of so PDs? If there is like there is a del T by del T. So, will it overwrite the rule of B square minus? It could, it could, yeah, it could, because the independent variables we are, what we are looking at is only x and y. Can we take in, that way? Yeah, but in this case, there are actually three independent variables, and we should take all of them into consideration while uh, determining whether it should be uh, hyperbolic, elliptic, or anything. But uh, this kind of a, uh, you know, class, this does not really uh, lend itself to the uh, techniques of classification which we learned right so yeah you are correct so the presence of time on top of the two spatial variables x and y actually complicates this problem a bit more so even if we uh, you know go back and look at this equation the generic pd which we learned how to classify this is only in x and y. There is no time component anywhere. Right? Yes, sir. Hmm. So, this might be the reason why this confusion arises. So, okay. I will uh, try to read up a little bit more on this. And we will uh, discuss more on this next day. Okay. So, <laughs> as of this moment, I can't clarify this further. I, I don't know, honestly. 
so mathematically this does uh, you know boil down to an elliptic equation but uh, it is indeed a time marching problem so there should be some explanation here okay i'll get back on this next day remind me and okay cool so now moving on moving on to question number 5 of today's session this is the incompressible uh, sorry the compressible the steady compressible equation steady compressible flow equation Although we are learning CFD for incompressible flows, <laughs> briefly we'll look at this example of a compressible flow as well, and we will try to classify this whether it should be hyperbolic, elliptic, parabolic, or any of the above. There is no time variable here; it's only x and y. so our ways of classification should uh, successfully work on this one okay so we have a couple of responses let's see what everyone else has to say so here once again if we compare this with the generic pd Uh, this entire thing is a here c should be 1 and b is 0 using this try to figure out whether it should be hyperbolic elliptic parabolic or any of the above We have a couple of responses. I'm still waiting for others. Okay, so if we follow this process of doing b square minus four ac, b square is zero minus four is one minus. m infinity square into c which is 1 so this becomes let us put so i can write 4 in square minus 1 right so what should it be there can in fact be different scenarios based on the value of the mach number the same infinity by the way is the mach number
So the first scenario can be that Mach number is zero or not zero. Zero Mach number means there is no flow at all. So Mach number less than one is one case. So in that case, uh, this thing for Mach square minus one, this becomes negative. And hence, this is an elliptic problem. In another case, it could be identically equal to 1. In that case, this thing becomes equal to 0. That's a parabolic case. So this is the sonic condition. This is known as a subsonic condition and it could be supersonic as well. Where the Mach number is greater than 1 and this particular expression becomes greater than 0. And as a result, this becomes a hyperbolic problem. So it could be any of A, B, C, A, B or C depending on the value of Mach number. So the correct answer should be option D, any of the above. If you look at the solution, it is indeed any of the above. So I hope things are clear. Any questions on this? Okay. So if there are no questions, we'll move on to question number six now. Now we are being asked to classify the trichomy equation. Should it be hyperbolic, elliptic, parabolic or any of the above? The typical form of the trichomy equation is something like this. Now this is just one form. There can be a few other forms as well. So it can be plus x instead of minus and the x and y can be switched with each other as well so it could be something like this and the positive counterpart of this as well okay we have one response or two responses one in favor of D another one in favor of A so it could be any of the above or hyperbolic okay another response in favor of option D let's see what others have to say So let's focus on this first form here and let's write down the ABC. So A is 1, B is 0 and C is minus X or it could be X anyway, it doesn't matter. So then if we try to figure out what B square minus 4 AC is, it is 0 square minus 4 into 1 into minus X. So this becomes into minus x. So this becomes 4x. Now this entirely depends on the value of x. If uh, x is less than 0, x is equal to 0 or x is greater than 0, this would determine whether b square minus 4ac, this thing, is greater than equal to, uh, less than equal to or greater than 0. And that would determine whether it's hyperbolic, elliptic, or parabolic. Similar to uh, how the Mach number determined whether the steady uh, compressible flow equation is uh, hyperbolic, elliptic, or parabolic. In this case also, the value of x, which is one of the uh, independent variables, that itself can determine whether uh, this is uh, hyperbolic, elliptic, or parabolic.
Hence, the correct answer should be option D, any of the above. So the correct answer is any of the above. So I hope things are clear. We will keep moving. We move on to question number seven now, which is asking us that find the incorrect statement. So in case I have an equation which can be written like this, so dou u dou t plus a into the vector u equals 0. I am ignoring the all other terms. So let's say this is the form of the equation. So here basically u is a vector uh, given by, sorry, dou u dou x, sorry. So u is a vector which is small u comma v and Okay, and uh, A is the, A are the different coefficients, so, okay, we will need more than this. A are the coefficients, so, A1, A2, B1, B2, this sort of a thing. Okay, so I'll write this equation correctly. It's not of this form. So let's say this is uh, this kind of uh, analysis is basically eigenvalue analysis is used for first order PDs. So a generic first order PD can be written like this. So it has do u do x dou u dou y, dou v dou x, and dou v dou y. So this can be written like this, a1, a2, a3, a4, equal to, let's say, some f1. And let's say another equation like this. So, there are, there are two unknowns here, so u and v. So there should be two equations as well. So similarly, there would be another equation, uh, a4. So a5 plus a6 dou u dou y plus a7 dou v dou x plus a8 dou v dou y equal to, let's say, f2. And this entire thing can be simplified into this matrix A into dou u dou x plus another matrix B, which is dou u dou y equal to a vector F. So uh, u is also a vector, which is u comma v. F is a vector, which is F1, F2. And a and B are the mat coefficient matrices. So here for this one, 
it would be uh, A1, A3, A5, and uh, A7. And similarly, B would be A2, A4, A6, and A8. Okay. So, this is the form in which we are casting our PDEs in. Now, the question is, uh, so the thing is from the eigenvalues of these matrices A and B, we can figure out whether uh, uh, you know these equations are elliptic, hyperbolic or parabolic. So in case uh, the equation is, so th there are four statements now, you have to read those statements and figure out which of them are correct and which one is incorrect. So option A is the equation is called uh, elliptic if all eigenvalues of this matrix A are complex. Option B says that the equation is hyperbolic if all the eigenvalues are real and distinct. And equation C and option C uh, says that the equation is called parabolic if the eigenvalues are real but less in number than the number of the PDEs. So in this case we have two PDEs. So if the number of eigenvalues are less than 2, then it should be parabolic. That's what option C is saying. And option D is none of the above. Now, in this kind of a question where you have to find the incorrect statement, uh, none of the above means that all these statements are correct. Okay. So don't get confused. Read this correctly and uh, carefully. And once you have figured out the correct solution, you can type it in the chat box. I don't see any responses yet, hoping for some. Okay, so it's a bit complicated. Let's have a look at the solution first. So the solution is option D, none of the above, which means that all of these are true. So it is indeed that if the eigenvalues of A are complex, then that is an elliptic equation. And if the eigenvalues are real and distinct, that is a hyperbolic equation. And if the eigenvalues are real, but less in number than the number of PDs, then it is parabolic. So this basically means that there are repeated eigenvalues. Number of distinct eigenvalues are less than the number of equations. So in that case, it becomes parabolic. So this basically boils down to the uh, theory of characteristics so, and the number of characteristics are actually uh, linked with the number of eigenvalues. So if the eigenvalues are complex then that means that the characteristics are also imaginary and if eigenvalues are real and distinct that means there are real and distinct characteristics which is uh, you know, a telltale sign of a hyperbolic equation. And uh, the number of eigenvalues being less means the number of characteristics are also less. So let's say in a 2D case, there will be one uh, characteristic line. And that is once again something which we see in parabolic equations. So that's why uh, all the three options, A, B, and C are correct. And hence, you should pick option D as the correct solution. That is none of the above. Okay. Uh, 
All right. So if things are clear, we will move along to question number eight. Uh, so last time we had to find out the incorrect statement. Now we have to find out the correct statement among these. So this is again uh, related to characteristics and the mathematical classification. So option A is saying that if components of the characteristic normal are real, the equation is elliptic. Option B is if components of the characteristic normal are complex, then the equation is hyperbolic. Option C is if components of the characteristic normal are real, but less than the number of PDs, the equation is parabolic. Or option D, all of the above, meaning that all these uh, three statements are correct, like the previous one. So what should it be? So basically, uh, uh, in uh, 1D, we get characteristic lines, and in 2D, we get characteristic surfaces like this. And surfaces are basically uh, characterized by the their normal, which can now be, uh, you know, uh, we can take components of that normal along the x and the y direction. And this is, this is how we land up on uh, whether the equation is elliptic, hyperbolic, or parabolic. The nature of those normals would tell us. Okay, so we have one response in favor of option A. A is incorrect. Okay, you have to find the correct statement by the way for this one. Okay. Someone is saying that it should be C. Let's see what others have to tell me. C once again. Yeah, so let's have a look at the solution. Solution is actually C. So those of you who said that it should be C, so you're correct. Yeah. So if the characteristic normal, if the components of the characteristic normal are real, then the equation is elliptic. This is incorrect. It should be hyperbolic. And if the components are complex, then the equation is hyperbolic. This is also incorrect. It should be elliptic. Only the third option is right that if the characteristic normal, the components of the characteristic normal are real, but less than the number of PDs, similar to the eigenvalue argument as well, then the equation is parabolic. This one is correct. And all of the above definitely won't be wrong because A and B are also wrong. It is option C which should be correct. So, good. Those of you who did, well done. Okay. So, we'll now move on to question number nine of today's session, which is asking us, how would you classify the boundary layer equation for flow over a flat plate? So, this is Prandtl boundary layer equation. For an unseparated... Unseparated boundary layer. So, would it be option A hyperbolic, option B elliptic, C parabolic, or D that is, it can be either hyperbolic or elliptic? Okay, so someone is telling that it should be option D. 
let's see what others have to say. We have one response so far in favor of option D, telling it can be A or C, that is either hyperbolic or parabolic. So how does this equation look like? So, do u do x plus v do u do y equal to mu the x derivative becomes very small since you know this comes from scaling analysis and if it's over a flat plate then the pressure gradient would also be zero so that's why these are the only terms remaining in the Navier-Stokes equation so the term with the highest order is this one and if we look at this so then uh, a is uh, if we go by the norm a is 0 b is also 0 it is only c which is equal to nu the nu is the kinematic viscosity or also known as the momentum diffusivity so now v square minus 4 ac would become 0 minus 4 into 0 into new so this is zero so if it's zero it should be what someone is telling that it should be b elliptic no, no. so if b square minus 4ac is zero it should be parabolic right it should actually be option c so yeah so i guess you corrected yourself good Okay, so if we have a look at the solution, it is indeed parabolic, that is option C. So this is a very interesting thing. So normally we find, uh, you know, parabolic problems to be time marching problems, right? Problems which march in time. In this case, there is no time component here. So it's a steady case, a boundary layer forming like this. There's a flow coming in. And there's this boundary layer for me. Now the interesting thing is this becomes a marching problem in space where you can march in the direction x and if you have the solution at some x then a delta x later you can march and then figure out the uh, velocity profile there. So this becomes a space marching problem and this uh, in theory goes on till infinity in a real life all, uh, of course there will be a limit to it but in theory it goes on just like time it keeps evolving so this is a very interesting example anyway any questions on this okay so then we will move on to the last question of today's session which is asking us that which of these characteristics okay so here <laughs> using the word characteristics is not right so uh, by this i mean you know uh, what are the uh, features which apply to the parabolic equation so is it option a a finite domain of dependence and an infinite domain of influence option b no domain of dependence and no domain of influence Option C, a finite domain of dependence and a finite domain of influence. Or is it option D, that is none of the above. So as an example, I will tell you this. So hyperbolic equations, we learned something like this. So if we go in T and X, and let's say if this is the point P. So point P has this finite domain of influence and then 
infinite domain oh sorry this is not influence this is dependence and an infinite domain of influence so what do these words mean so basically the uh, state of the physical quantity at p that depends on whatever the state was earlier in this finite region from let's say some time t equal to 0 to whatever time this is at and the state of that physical quantity at p can affect the states at an infinite domain uh, later on so it can influence these states in that domain and that is infinite because time goes on so this is true in case of hyperbolic we need a similar argument for the parabolic equation so what does it have a b c or d We have two responses, one in favor of option A and another one in favor of option B. Let's see what others have to say. We have a C as well. Can we get a B? <laughs> Well, B is telling that there's no domain of dependence and no domain of influence. Okay, unlikely. Anyway, so since we have a divided crowd, let's have a look at the solution. The solution is actually option A. There is a finite domain of dependence and an infinite domain of influence. So it's basically similar to hyperbolic case as well. So basically for parabolic. Let's say at some time t equal to tau, I have a value like this. And this entire region before it is the domain of dependence. And the entire region above it, this is the domain of influence. as you can see that uh, this is infinite however this is finite so finite domain of dependence and infinite domain of influence option a should be correct okay this is our point b All right, so that was the last question of today's session. From my side, all questions are over. If you have any questions, you can ask them now. Okay, so otherwise we will close the session now. So I'll thank everyone for being so, uh, you know, enthusiastic and attentive. Okay, we will meet again next week from 6 to 8. Uh, and this will be the uh, Google Meet link that we shall use. Okay, so thank you and bye-bye.